Welcome back, everybody, and a very Merry Christmas to all of us. Ho, ho, ho. I'm including myself in that. No, that's, that's fair. No one else is going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we are, of course, uh, returning to talk about the Santa Claus 2. And the bizarre universe of the Santa Claus in general. Absolutely. If you could leave a like on this video, that would be great, because it helps this video, and it helps me, which is what this <laughs> is about, right? Yeah. If Good. no one else is going to help you, you should help yourself. <laughs> that's what Christmas is all about. Exactly. Now, I realised, and a few people pointed this out on last week's episode when we talked about the first one, we didn't really say whether we liked it or not. Oh, right. <laughs> Previously. I had, I had Denny's. I went and I'm like, I had no Denny's. And I, and I, ate, I ate some Denny's. Um, I mean, it's better than this one. I think this one's better. Really? I think of the trilogy, having having shotgunned all three <laughs> of these in a very short span of time, I think the second one is the best one. Interesting. I, th I think it's got, the, it's got a nice, simple plot. Mm -hmm. The happiness of the world is at stake, blah, blah, blah. But not really. We're just mucking about. Out. And I think it's got the best villain, which is to say it's got a villain. Well, the third one's got a villain, yeah, which we'll come back yeah, to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's probably fair. I think also the implications of this universe are not as bad in this one. However, they do bleed over into the third one. Oh, I've still some, got questions. <laughs> there's some stuff that I really want to talk this about. This one I think is also the least schmaltzy. Because, right. Not that I have anything against the child actors in the first one or the third one. Mm. I think this one, it's mostly like teens and it's just being silly and I think that he's being silly yeah. the elves ever find out that we've made a switch <gasps> no it's interesting though because to me as well it felt more toothless and it's oh, also yeah. because this one is G as opposed to the previous one which was <laughs> PG did you get that sense yeah I mean obviously in a PG movie uh, Tim Allen gets to do more R R R S. in a in a in a G movie obviously he's restricted to one R <laughs> he gets one big R <laughs> They've got to know exactly where to place it, you know what? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So this movie, one of the big plot points is that Charlie, the boy from the first movie, mm. he's now turned bad. He's evil. He's putting on a beanie. He's spray painting. That's you right. know he's bad news. Yeah. I think this is a bleed over from the Hollywood executive thing where, which we talked about last week, where like a lot of these movies from the 90s are about dads who are spending too much time in boardrooms. Mm, yeah, and right. this is just an extension of that where their kids have grown up and they're like, my kids are delinquent. Yeah. What, what, I need to go back and fix my delinquent son. Do you think there's maybe a movie executive who's he's, he's not spent enough time with his children? Yeah. And he's like, if I just keep making movies about a dad who <laughs> improves, maybe... Maybe my own kids will come back to me. Maybe that's what's going to happen. I think it's a very real possibility. But what, what, where do you think the line is on the naughty list in this case? I mean, we know it gets tweaked by well, an evil villain. That's true. Um, well, doing a big graffito. Yeah, obviously. Obviously, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's but, naughty. But what if you scrub out the graffito? Does that then wipe you off the list? Who is writing the list? Is it automated? Who's specifically who watching? The, who set the rules? Was it the original Santa Claus? Yeah. Because in these movies, uh, Tim Allen's Santa Claus is like, uh, you know, if you're kind of nice, that counts as being nice. Mm. But the, apparently the rules are like, no, if you if you do even a single, <laughs> you're on the naughty list. So Forever, uh, yeah. Yeah, right? Is it one of those situations like in the movie Wanted? With the loom of doom, which tells you who to kill, is it like that situation? Oh, so, so is it automated and magic? So, you, so I reckon, I reckon maybe there's like when the first Santa arrived at the North Pole, there was yeah. like a chasm, like a like a yawning chasm <laughs> with some glowing green ooze in it, and it's just like decide which children are naughty, and he's like, okay, glowing green <laughs> ooze in a chasm. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. Anyway, this movie has two plots. It does, They've, yeah. they've shoehorned in two, which I quite enjoy, which mm. is one, uh, naughty kid, as you naughty mentioned. Kid, his, yeah. his own son is on the naughty list and what mm. can he do? And two... Uh, the elves forgot to tell me how to find a wife like eight years ago. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. If he doesn't find a wife, which, okay, which leads to questions, obviously. Yeah. Number one question is... Tim With the Allen gaping hole like, you must find your wife, sacrifice her to me. <laughs> First of all, when Tim Allen Santa arrived in the North Pole in the first movie, yeah. there wasn't a Mrs. Claus. No. So I guess my question is, did the previous Santa have a Mrs. Claus? Mm. And if so, when he died, what happened to her? Did yeah. she just clutch her heart and collapse and they <laughs> threw her into the chasm? Did she, did she lose her Mrs. Claus powers and then she just wandered out into the frozen waste of the North Pole <laughs> to die? Well, there's, there are options. Yes. Th those two of which you mentioned. There's also the possibility that he wasn't married and he hadn't been Santa for that long. Because, again, he was a bad Santa Claus. He was a bad Santa. We probably we established about it. he seems like a mean, awful man. Yeah. Or, it's not or at least incompetent. So maybe <laughs> he went Maybe he went eight years and he was just like, I just can't. And he, he knew right at the start you needed a Mrs. Claus and he just couldn't find anyone because yeah. he was... 
Too busy. Because he's a drunk. Off. He's a drunk. <laughs> Always getting people the wrong prezies. What a strange situation. And it's also like, I mean, I get it because if you're the president, for example, n- not to use any real world examples, <laughs> but if you're the president and then you're no longer the president, you can't be the president. The first lady doesn't keep being the first lady. They bring no. they bring in a new one. But what's, <laughs> they, but what's the retirement? They, bring, they wheel one in like Hannibal Lecter on that journey. <laughs> but what's the retirement plan? You know, and also if yeah. you don't want to be Santa, and we'll touch on this more in the third one, is there a way to retire without just reversing all time and space? Like, do you have to die or reverse all time and Good space? Good question. And also, it's never really established in this movie what does happen if Santa doesn't find a Mrs. Claus. Like, it seems to be like... I guess there's just no Christmas? Well, that's the thing. You, I mean, you... Why didn't they tell him? It's pivotal information. Like, the single most important detail in the history of Christmas. If you de if you de Santificationize, yeah. as he as he starts to do in this movie, and you get all the way back to being human, what happens? Do they pick another? So does the chasm pick another Santa Claus, or or does Christmas just end for everybody? I guess, it's a bit I guess it does. Yeah, I mean, right? also Christmas continues regardless of whether there's a Santa or not, because parents are still buying presents, maybe? Sure. So I don't know if it makes that much of a difference. Oh, capitalism destroys the planet. Oh, happens, okay. Yeah. Well, oh, here's another here's another hypothetical situation. This is from right at the start of the movie, mm-hmm. so if we could start there. Right at the start, there is like an, like an observational radar plane that goes over the North Pole, yeah. and it nearly discovers the existence of Santa's workshop, and they, they like go into stealth mode. So that I... The... Stealth mode. Oh, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> I can you hear those cheers, Mason? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess my question is, what happens if it doesn't work and these people do discover... Are the, are the elves going to shoot the plane now? Okay, let's go! That's a great question. Isn't it, though? Has this never happened before? I mean, surely... Maybe there's an elf with, like, a like a surface-to-air missile and he's just shaking and he's like, I don't want to do it, man. I don't want to do it. Elf with a gun. These kids are all on the nice list. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the nice list. I can't kill them. I reckon there's one and elf. And Santa's like, take the shots! <laughs> There'd be one elf who, you, who would do it. Yeah, I reckon probably. Bernard would do it. Because yeah. he's all about protecting the secrets of Christmas. And this new guy, he's no good. And he ends up taking over his role. Yeah, I think they're in a situation where they will do terrible things if they have to, to, prefer, <laughs> to, to preserve Christmas. What I don't understand is I, I genuinely do not understand why they didn't tell him day one that he needs a wife. Right. Like it is a miracle that he ma- literally that he managed to pull that off. And it's a trick because the curse that is him being the Santa Claus, right? Yes. He then has to glom onto somebody else mm. and have it infect them. He has to spread the virus. And yeah. ruin their livelihood. Because mm. she's a working woman. She's doing really well at like educating. Being a mean principle. Yeah, but she's also one of those mean but fair principles. That's true. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And he takes that away from her. Yeah. He's a terrible person. Yeah, yeah. I do like though in these movies that you do get the sense that Tim Allen could snap at any minute. Right. And I don't know whether that's the actor himself or... Or just the way he does it. But do you get that sense that he's a Santa who's just like, just one more thing, I'm going to fucking lose my mind. <laughs> do you get that sense? Maybe maybe in the third one more than this Yeah, one that's happens. probably more accurate, yeah. Mm. So I wanted to also talk about one of the things that bothers me about a lot of Christmas oh, yeah. movies. And this one specifically is the toys that they have in this, they're not accurate to what kids like. It's like tin trains and wooden horses and wind-up yes. kangaroos. Like all this shit that nobody wants. Outside of, you know, collectors purchasing them because they had them in the 50s. Where are your Game Boy Advances? Where are your Razor Scooters? It was 2002, I was going to ask you, did you Google 2002 (laughs) Horses Toys? You're absolutely right. Maybe, again, the, the conceit of this movie seems to be that your parents buy you presents, but also Santa provides some presents with magic. So maybe the presents you remember are the Game Boy Advances that your parents buy you. Sure. And the ones that Santa gives you are the ones you're like, ha cool, and Great. then you sort of shove them aside under the <laughs> under the dinner table for at Christmas, and then you just sort of forget about them. I mean, who knows how long they last? Maybe they disintegrate. It's entirely like possible. Like after 24 hours, and you just forget about maybe, them. Maybe the elves come and collect them and just recycle them. Speaking of Santa magic, yeah, I have. I do have some questions. First of all, you did mention that he he eventually does uh, uh, attract a, San, a Mrs. Claus. Yeah, uh, I mean he goes on a bloody bad date though, mate. Well, he's, she's wearing his face. She's wearing <laughs> his exact face, not like a picture of Santa Claus. It's Tim Allen's face on her true. T-shirt. <laughs> do people know what? Sa- like Santa actually looks, looks like that's Santa magic, James. Okay, I guess it is. Anyway, a great appearance by Molly Shannon. If you if you wanted like a like a like a super hyperactive weirdo in like oh, the yeah. early two thousands, you get Molly Shannon. Or even now, yeah, I guess that's probably true. Yeah. Um, but do you think it's kind of cheating? 
Because the way he attracts the principal yeah. as his Mrs. Claus, like he doesn't hypnotize her, which I'm assuming well. his Santa powers allow him to do. <laughs> like he just channels the void, the green void, and, and, and she's, she's enraptured. But like he does take her on a sort of a magical sleigh ride with yep. no driver, and he does well, it's like... Got, it's got reindeer or whatever, or yeah, horses and he or something. Yeah, does, and he does sort of conjure up the present she always wanted as a child. Yeah. Isn't that cheating? Yes. Like a little bit? He doesn't use his actual charm. You know what it's like? It's like when they go on The Bachelor and it's like, I can't believe we got to go on a helicopter and we visited the Eiffel Tower. The guy didn't organise that. Outside of the show, he can't do that. Right? She, she needs to recognise who he is at his core. That's what I'm saying. And also, right at the end, he's like, you, you know me. I was there when you were a kid getting all your presents. <laughs> what? First of all, you weren't. <laughs> The curse of Santa Claus was, and I guess you're channeling that, but that's creepy, right? If you were, yeah, yeah. real weird. But speaking of presents also, and you did mention this as well, he also, in order to charm her, he livens up the boring office Christmas party. Boy, does he. By, by using his Santa charm and also by giving everybody a bunch of presents. Yeah. But I thought it was odd. All the adults get presents that they never got as kids. And they're like, oh, nostalgia Christmas magic. Surely there's some people who are out there who are like, Oh, just what I always wanted, cash and booze. I was going to say, isn't that the perfect situation to go, look, you're in a public school, funds are limited. Mm. You each get 10 grand. You each get <laughs> yeah. 10 grand. Right. Do with them whatever you want. Yeah. I mean, presents are all good, but that's the kind of shit you kick under the table after a day. Yeah. Because none of those gifts to me looked good. No. Like, no, no, I don't want any of this ever. I mean, they they did, they, they were, they all were like, you know, like a new in box yeah. Like dead stock, like these toys. But I'm like, they smell a bit mildewy, if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a, they have been sitting on a shelf for a long time. Where did he get them, though, for real? I don't know. I mean, he's magic, I, I reckon, isn't he? I reckon he went through time and he stole them off other deserving children <laughs> from, like, the did. 60s or 70s. What I also f found very odd about this movie is when he goes to reveal to her that he needs a wife and that he is Santa, he's like... You, hey, you know how I got all those presents out of nowhere and, and it snowed that one time? Well, guess what? I'm Santa and magic is real. What? Like, you don't want to have other examples of things happening? Well, he had run out of magic, but I agree. He should have done something earlier. He should have been like, look, my hands are empty. <laughs> Nintendo Switch. <laughs> that's not. That's from the future. It's not even from now. Look at it. Look at the high-res graphics. <laughs> look at this. You can dock it. You can play it handheld. I mean, that would work if you wanted somebody... I'm from hell. I mean, the North Pole. <laughs> that, would, that would work if you wanted somebody to be enamoured with the Nintendo Switch. I think but the focus true. needs to be on him, I doesn't it? I guess that's it? probably true. But yeah, he really kind of leaves it to the last minute to tell her. And then when it turns out that, hey, she believes him and they're back at the North Pole. And she's like, oh my God, this is all real and elves are real and whatever. Maybe I can move up here. He's like, look, I don't want to put any pressure on you. But if you don't marry me in the next few minutes, Christmas is cancelled forever. Ever, yeah. That's a lot to put on it a really person. It really is, isn't it? And it's, like a, it's like a very public proposal. <laughs> yeah, Where exactly. you bring in dancers and a, and a, and a choreographer. Everybody's team. family's there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then immediately when they get married... He ages 40 years and puts on 100 pounds, yep. which, look, I guess is a metaphor for, for marriage in general. But And then in the credits, she's also aged up. She, which yeah, is, she which got is thick all of a sudden. That's right, which is reversed in the next movie. But that might be when you have a baby, they take those things away from you so you can do it. But I don't know. That's a lot to throw on a person yeah. and a lot of expectations. And I think it just is going to lead to disaster. Yeah. That's what I think. I mean, it doesn't ultimately, but... No, because Christmas mean, magic. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Christmas magic, we, did, we haven't mentioned in this, the villain of this piece. Really uh, great. I think so too. <laughs> so so in order to, you know, do the, the dual thing of like get his kid off the naughty list and also uh, find a wife, uh, the elves concoct a scheme where they build a robot duplicate of Santa who takes care of the, the, the North Pole workshop while he's back. Good makeup America. and everything. Just a, just a, an abomination of a thing. Yeah. Just, a, just a horrible, glossy, <laughs> rubbery... Just a real Max Headroom of a monster. Just it really horrifying, is. yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the performance adds a lot to it too. Mm. Because I think Tim Allen gets to do the thing that he's always wanted to do in these movies, is just scream at kids. Yes. I mean, I know he's screaming at elves, but in real life, they're children. <laughs> they like, sure he's are. screaming at children. Yeah. So I think that's why he's enjoying it so much. Mm. And you see a lot of the performance and a lot of the funniest moments in the movie comes through in those moments. And the introduction of like the tin soldiers is really fun. And they're these super clunky suits that real people had to wear, which they hated. And then there's a <laughs> moment where the, the elves attack them. And it does look like pure joy from actual children getting to just go ham on these, <laughs> on these tin soldiers. I have written that scene just a note that just says continuous screaming. Because that's when you know kids are really having fun. It's just constant, ah, 
snowballs. <laughs> exactly. But you know what? He's a good Santa, it turns out, because he saves Christmas, and it is mentioned that kids are 86% happier since he took the job, which is a massive increase. It really I is. mean, how bad was that guy prior? Seems like he was the worst, yeah. But on top of that, I think also the virus curse slash whatever this thing is that, in, that glommed onto his personality... I think his years in marketing meant that he was able to do things previous Santas couldn't. I see, Because he's got right. modern 90s marketing <laughs> yeah, skills right? that can be adapted uh-huh. into 2002 Santa Claus policies. That's probably true. What do you think about the inclusion of seasonal figureheads? Peter Boyle returns, who was his boss in the last movie, as oh, yes, uh, okay. Father Time. Uh, mixed on them. Yeah, I think they're probably okay. fine. I yeah. like Aisha Tyler. The Tooth Fairy, I feel, gets a bit too much play, and there's a moment where he needs to pull a tooth, and they pick the front tooth? Like, you don't want to grab, like, a molar at (laughs) the back, Uh but hey, whatever. And then you see Charlie, who actually, you know, he comes back to save the day at the end. He has pulled out one of his front teeth. That's an adult tooth, man. It's not coming back, right? I mean, it does come back. Because of Christmas magic. Because of Christmas magic, but yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention about that group is... The rabbit is fucking terrifying. Oh, yeah. That is a spooky... That's the spookiest thing in these movies. I'm still a little bit spooked, and I saw this, you know, as an adult. Imagine if we'd seen it as children. Anyways, it's... um, I think it's all right. Yeah. I, I like the first one more because the first one feels kind of dangerous and weird in a way that this one, for me, doesn't okay, as much. Okay, sure, right. But the things like, you know, the evil Santa and, and other inclusions and, and, you know, and trapping a woman into a, into a, into a weird magic marriage... I guess that's those are all good things, aren't they? They sure are, absolutely. Yeah. There you go, mate. This has been the Santa Claus 2. No extra title. It's just the Santa Claus 2. It doesn't have like an extra. It feels like it should have an extra bit. Like Um, it should be the Santa Tin Terror. Yeah. The Santa Claus 2. Brackets wherein it's revealed that Santa Claus has a hibernation period. <laughs> that's weird, right? I don't remember that. He's Can like, I that? sleep a lot of the time, and it's like, what? From the curse. It will be the curse, yeah. From the brain worm that's eating into his brain. (laughs) Almost certainly, yeah. Yeah. Anyways, of course, we will be back next week to cap off this trilogy with the the escape clause. That's That's what it's about, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And Martin Short's in it and other things happen in that movie. And it's a much weirder and worse movie in a lot of ways, isn't it? In a lot of ways, it's the worst one. Yeah. All right, thanks for watching this. So this is Caravan of Garbage. These come out every week. And if you want these early, you can go to bigsandwich.co. We've also got our podcast, The Weekly Planet, ad-free feed. We've got our bonus podcast where we talk clickbait articles. We've got movie commentaries galore, don't we, Mason? That's right. So check that out if you do want to sign up. I'm Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. Do you love the Santa Claus? Let us know. That question's for me. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> okay, great. This is all for me, Mason. Yeah, I, I can, I, Christmas I is about me. No, I, I get it. Thank okay. you. I appreciate it. Goodbye. Grab that. Uh? Uh? Remember that Simpsons gag where it kills Wilson? Yeah. <laughs> that's a good. Back to jail for me. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good.